Check this out. It's a fancy reception predicting application, and it's one of the most useful online tools for shortwave listeners, DXs, and amateur radio operators. So what is this fantastic tool? It's called the VOACAP Propagation Prediction Service, and it has been around for many years. VOACAP stands for Voice of America Coverage Analysis Program. It's described as a free, professional, high-frequency propagation prediction software originally developed for the Voice of America. It allows you the opportunity to make do-it-yourself HF propagation predictions for any time of the day, for any time of the year, and on any point on the Earth. VOACAP, or VOACAP as some people call it, is based on more than 50 years of research. It is considered by many as the most professional HF performance prediction tool available on the market. It has been used for HF frequency planning by the Voice of America and a number of other international HF broadcasters and institutions all over the world. VOACAP can provide detailed point-to-point -point graphs and area coverage maps for many parameters of circuit quality, such as uh, signal-to-noise ratio, uh, circuit reliability, signal power, maximum usable frequency, and much, much more. It also includes accurate predictions of the distribution of worldwide atmospheric and man-made radio noise. Now, there are two versions of VOACAP. There's one for amateur radio operators and one for HF broadcasting, which can also be used by shortwave listeners. The ham radio version has a few different features for changing the parameters and viewing predictions when compared with the HF broadcasting version. But the two services are essentially the same model. However, it's the HF broadcasting version that we will review today. If you haven't visited the VOACAP website in a while, you will notice that uh, quite a few changes have been made in the layout. Over the past few weeks, I've been corresponding with one of the service administrators, Finnish amateur radio operator Yari Perkiamaki, Oscar Hotel 6 Bravo Golf. I've been providing just a little bit of feedback on the VOA CAPS website's new layout, and Yari has been working very hard and doing a great job in making some changes. So let's have a look at what Yari has been working on recently. Okay, so here's the uh, web page that you can open up for VOACAP for the high frequency broadcasting part of the application. One of the first things you'll find is that Google Maps has gone and been replaced by an alternative service. Apparently Google felt it just wasn't making enough money and so we can all cry poor Google. And recently it placed a subscription charge on its map service which for Non-profit community services such as VOACAP makes it totally unrealistic to continue using it. Hence the need for a change of map service. Now this is an interactive map. You'll see there are two markers, red and blue, placed on the map. The red marker signifies the transmitter's location and the blue marker is the receiver's location. So to set up the two locations, you simply drag the uh, red marker uh, and the blue marker to wherever you wish to uh, place them on their appropriate locations on the map. Now under the map you'll see in that line at the bottom there um, distance calculations from the transmitter to the receiver being displayed in kilometres and miles and the bearing in degrees from true north via the great circle short path and long path. So to help you find locations, the usual zoom in and zoom out buttons are there on the top left hand side of the screen. Uh, or you can just simply use the scroll wheel on your mouse. If you are not sure where a specific shortwave broadcast station's transmitter is located, then head over to the top left hand side of your screen where it says select TXQTH. There you'll find a drop-down menu with literally hundreds of uh, known transmitter sites sorted under a three-letter country code. For instance, Australia is AUS, uh, Brazil is uh, BRA, USA is, well, 
USA, <laughs> GBR is for Great Britain, and so on. So some of these transmitter sites uh, listed are not currently in operation, but they have been left in the list because it's not uncommon to find the occasional uh, reactivation of a transmitter site. There is a select RX QTH uh, drop-down menu as well, and with that has a long list of cities right around the world, and you can also see the locations can be entered using the uh, Maidenhead grid references, and also uh, exact latitude or longitude coordinates. So any of those uh, tools can be used to input the exact location that you want. So this map is truly interactive. Whether you choose to move the uh, red or, or blue markers around, or uh, you choose to use the QTH drop-down menus, or input the grid references, or enter the latitude and longitude coordinates, it's all linked together and calculated for you. Move the markers around and the latitude and longitude uh, coordinates and maidenhead grids are automatically changed. Plus, look at the bottom of the map and you'll find that the distances calculated uh, from the transmitter and the receiver are also instantly recalculated. So let's go ahead and input a sample transmitter and receiver location. Let's say the uh, BBC's transmitter site at Wolferton. Uh, so GBR for England, there's Wolferton. Transmitter site bumps up to the exact location there. And a listener's receiver location. Let's uh, go down to the USA and say Nashville in Tennessee. So there you can see on the map a solid green line and a dotted red line connecting the red and blue markers. The green line shows the Great Circle short path and the red line represents the Great Circle long path between the two locations. The small blue circle along the two Great Circle lines uh, represent the midway point between the transmitter and receiver along that path. Now depending on what part of the map you are using, you will notice that there is a currently a little bug that prevents either, uh, either the green line or the red line from connecting at the 180 degree uh, latitude point. Now hopefully that can be something that's uh, fixed soon, but even with that break in the line you can still see where it uh, joins up, so it's not a, a critical bug at all. In the bottom left corner of the map you'll find a slider showing the current time in UTC and below that the current date in UTC. Hover the cursor over the date and click on the down arrow to see a pop-up calendar. The month you select will be used for propagation prediction calculations. The day and time you've selected will be used for drawing the grey line zone terminator over the interactive map. So you can set up predictions of when the bands are likely to open up at any time of the year. As you play with the time slider and the calendar, you can see the uh, shaded day, night and grey line indicator changing across the map. Looking at the top of the map, you can see three groups of circles coloured red, green and blue. Clicking on these circles show the sunrise and sunset times at the transmitter the midpoint uh, for short path is the uh, top row and for the long path the second row and for the receiver. The interactive map shows how the terminator line will run across the map at the time clicked on. Now this feature may not be so useful for the casual shortwave listener but for serious DXs this information may be beneficial for finding the best times to hear some rare low-powered DX broadcaster. Other user adjustable parameters are available in the pop-up menus and buttons on the left and right sides of the interactive map. Adjustment of these will affect the propagation predictions produced by the program. So on the left-hand side of your screen, for instance, the triangle button 
shows five additional sites of competing locations that are trying to make a QSO with the DX station. Now this is a feature that is relevant to amateur radio operations, so we'll ignore that for the purposes of HF broadcasting. The circle with the dot is to set both the transmitter and receiver latitude and longitude along with the transmitter and receiver antenna selections. So when you come back to the website again later on or refresh the page, your personalised setup will reappear. Now the setting is stored in a cookie. To clear this retained information, all you've got to do is simply click the circle with the cross in it and the cookie will be deleted. Now the box with SP in it is a button that toggles between short path and long path. Short path is the default setting. This setting will be used in many of the calculations you choose among the 10 uh, green buttons below the interactive map. The No Ease button relates to the sporadic E layer propagation, which is predominantly a summertime phenomena. This is not so useful for HF propagation, so we will ignore that too. Let's look at the right hand side of the screen. You'll find five buttons there. The first being the transmitter power drop down menu, showing from one watt up to all the way up to 800 kilowatts. Default setting is being set at uh, 100 kilowatts. Then there is the antennas button that opens up in an overlay from the left hand side of the screen showing both the transmitter and receiving antennas for all the international and tropical shortwave bands. As the vast majority of shortwave listeners won't know what type of antenna is being used at the transmitter, the default 218AHR setting is probably best left where it is. However, shortwave listeners will know what their own antennas are. So these can be filled out for each of the bands listed there. Aside from the default shortwave uh, whip antenna, uh, you've got um, verticals and dipoles and Yagi beams and other antennas that can be set for the different bands. The settings button opens two parameters called general prediction settings and coverage area map settings. I won't go into all these variables here because the online map gives plenty of detail about those settings and for shortwave listening purposes these are probably not too critical. However, the first two settings are interesting and will have an impact on the propagation predictions you receive from the program. The noise setting is an option of choosing the noise level at the receiving location. The noise value will affect just how well the signal is likely to be received at your location. So you need to make a determination of the noise levels at your QTH. When there is a lot of man-made noise, the probabilities of hearing a station are obviously lower. When the noise level is minimal, for example if you're living in a quiet or rural location, the probabilities of successfully hearing a shortwave broadcaster are of course increased. For example, I live in an area which is part residential and part semi-rural, so I mark my location as residential. Now for listeners living in inner city apartments you may find that the noisy setting is required. The BC quality parameter under that is a loading that relates to the type of broadcast quality you prefer listening to. The default setting is at good. However, because I am personally interested in weak signal DX, uh, I don't mind putting up with barely audible signals uh, and tend to have this setting at poor. The setting you choose will have an impact on the predictions you receive. So feel free to play around with the settings and observe the uh, resulting predictions. And now we get into the nitty gritty of this very powerful application. The next button, Prop Charts, can initially appear complicated to view, but don't be scared off. I'm not going to cover all the permutations of these charts here. There's much useful 
information available in the online manual which explains what all of these charts do. Clicking the Prop Charts button on the right side of the map displays 16 prediction charts for all the shortwave broadcast bands from the rarely used 11 metres at 26 megahertz all the way down to 75 metres at uh, 3.9 megahertz. For example, the charts show the probability for receiving a shortwave broadcast between the chosen transmitter and receiver sites for a specific shortwave band over the entire 24-hour uh, period. The RHEL short path chart is the default chart and for most users this chart will probably be, probably be enough for an overall understanding of the predicted propagation conditions. You can get uh, calculations for both short path and long path by simply pressing on the SP button. You will also notice that by moving the blue and red markers on the interactive map uh, that the charts change accordingly to give an instant update. This is a really cool and, and fun feature to use. So just going back to the REL parameter for a minute, the REL, R-E-L, stands for Circuit Reliability. The REL is related to VOA CAP's output parameters of signal-to-noise ratio and required signal-to-noise ratio and is defined as a circuit reliability factor. It tells us the percentage of days in the month when the signal-to-noise ratio value will be equal to or exceed the required signal-to-noise ratio. As I just mentioned earlier, although you will see the, the graphs containing lines for um, SDBW, SNR, and MUF Day, the main graph line for shortwave listeners to focus on is the REL. The higher the percentage readout on the REL line, the greater the chance of reception of your target station at a particular time of the day, given the parameters you filled out earlier under the settings button. Well, I hope all this makes some sense. And as I've already said, the online manual gives much greater detail on all of these parameters and predictions. The last button on the right hand side of your screen is the prop wheel. This displays the 24 hour propagation prediction wheel focusing on the circuit reliability or the REL parameter. Again if you keep this window open as you move around the markers on the map uh, or change any of the parameters under the transmitter power, antennas or the general settings buttons, uh, the predictions will change instantly on the screen. And it's brilliantly done. It just shows how powerful this program really is. Personally, I think the prop wheel is one of the best things about this application. It visually shows you possible uh, propagation scenarios for specific bands across the full 24-hour period and the percentage likelihood of that targeted signal being received at your location. Finally, at the bottom of the page are the 10 green buttons providing more detailed visual and text data. So they include a band by band uh, predictions for the transmitter and receiver sites that you have selected. A best uh, frequency chart. a circuit reliability chart and lots of other information all the way along there and all uh, the one that I like which I use quite often is the all-year prediction chart 
I use this one quite a bit to see the best times of the year uh, for possible DX reception from a specific station that I'm interested in. It's a great little facility there. Now, to get the maximum benefit from all the features of this propagation predicting tool, there's a bit of a learning curve to negotiate, but it's well worth the effort. Of course, it must always be remembered the predictions are exactly that, educated guesses at what might happen. VOACAP is a fabulous tool and it provides great detail in calculating and forecasting point-to-point -point HF transmission circuits. But there's something to remember here. The ionosphere is in a constant state of flux and has about the same reliability as predicting the weather one week from now. So placing blind faith in any propagation prediction tool is really misplaced faith, no matter how good the application. Now, if your general knowledge of HF propagation is lacking somewhat, a good little primer, uh, an online service is available at the Australian Government's Space Weather Services. I'll put a link in the notes below for that uh, website. It's well worth a read. I hope this little introductory video on the VOACAP online HF prediction service has stirred some interest uh, in exploring this wonderful resource even further. 73 and good DX to you all.